Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so when you are in Canvas, You guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to switch this to student view. Yeah. Okay. So this is when you guys log in. This is what you should see. So you're going to see announcements from my class at the top. So here's the announcement. Um, obviously, you guys saw for the Zooms, as well as this one that talks about your classwork for the week. Um, it talks about your due when your work is due this week. Here's links to the two assignments that you can go ahead and click on. Today is Monday and on Wednesdays. Um, again, any answers that you share with somebody else or if you copy from somebody else will be a zero for both of you. Um, when my Zoom lessons are, and then here is my remind information and my email so you can contact me if you have issues. If you're looking for the assignments, it's on the left side here. So again, you'll see today's assignment marked Monday and the date and then Wednesdays here. Now here's the thing a lot of people have been getting stuck with. The instructions are at the top. Now right here, the first time you do this, you might have to scroll all the way down. And if everybody can see this, you might have to click this blue authorize button the first time. After you click it the first time, you shouldn't have to keep doing it. But if your work is not showing up right here in the Google Doc, that's what I need you to do is click this blue authorize button. Do you guys have any questions about the assignments or um, the announcements? No. Uh -huh. What was that, Edison? How we turn in. How do you turn in? So I, it's not on here from my side of it. Um, but if you down here, when the Google Doc shows up, there's going to be a blue turn in button. Does anybody see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. On your screen. Let me hold on. Let me stop sharing mine real quick. Yes, Tavana, we're going to go over the work together. We're going to get started on that in just a minute. Um, who has their Canvas uh, assignment for me open right now? What? Who, who is that? Jayla. Jayla, at the bottom of Zoom, can you click on share screen and show us your screen where my assignment is? What the heck? What the heck was that? What was that? What was what? I don't know. I think that was Brendan. Someone's yeah, eating their microphone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't eat your microphone. Okay, Jayla, yes. Do you guys see how she can see my Google Doc right there towards the bottom? Mm -hmm. And then on the right side, there's that blue submit button. Obviously, Jayla, don't click it yet. But that submit button is where you're going to submit the assignment after you fill out the Google Doc there. So you're going to fill it out first. Uh, yep. I got something different. What do you mean do you, you have something different? Well, this, uh, Angela, this is submit. Here's say, uh, missing uh, submit, a uh, lot of numbers, and then say translation. So you don't have a submit button? I got a blue button, but don't say exactly submit. It might say submit or it might say turn in, but either way, there should be a blue submit or turn in button for you guys. If it doesn't, we'll set up a separate time um, to do a Zoom call, Edixon, or at the very end of this call, I'll have you share your screen with me so I can see what you're looking at, okay? All right, Jayla, can you, I'm going to stop your sharing so we can go back. There we go. All right, guys. Um, so here we go with the lesson today. So open up that Google Doc for me. Um, I'm going to open it up on like my screen the normal way, but you guys should see the exact same thing in Canvas. Here we go. Okay, so when you guys open up Canvas and you open up that assignment for today, this is what you see. Starts off with the reading at the top with the link to the book. So you're going to click to open that link. And again, we are going to have, um, usually we only read seven or eight pages. Um, today it's going to be more like 15, 16 pages because it's an hour long lesson today. So I need you to hang with me through the reading. Um, really important that you don't zone out or walk away during the reading because then you won't be able to do the questions. If you don't understand what the reading is, you can ask me along the way. But if you walk away, you won't understand what we're doing. So where we finished on Thursday of last week um, was that he had been taken prisoner by the Nazis. 
Um, and he's telling his son Artie what happened. And at the very end here, it says, uh, well, Jew, don't worry, we'll find work for you. And they did. So they're just about to put him to work in one of these prisoner camps. Um, all right, somebody's background is pretty loud. If you are not talking, if you can put yourself on mute, and then if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to mute all of you guys, which I don't wanna do. Are we good? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. All right, so we are at the top of page 50. This was 51 that we finished. 52, he's in the prison camp, here we go. Another German took four or five from us to a stable. You see this mess? It better be spotlessly clean in one hour. You understand? It was impossible to do it in one hour. We really worked very hard, but an hour later, so not finished yet. This will cost you your soup, you lazy, and then B words. And somehow we did make the job in only an hour and a half, but look what you do, Artie. Huh? You're dropping on the carpet, cigarette ashes. You want it should be like a stable in here? Oops, sorry. Clean it, yes, otherwise I have to do it. Malika let it sit like this for a week and she'd never touch it. Again, that's his second wife. And she knows how with my sicknesses, it's hard now for me to do such things. Okay, okay, it's clean. So we lived and worked, again, flashback. We lived and worked a few weeks in the stable until they took us to an even bigger prisoner of war camp. Brr, the Polish prisoners get heated cabins. Yes, and we're just left to freeze in these tents. So they took everybody as prisoner guys, but the Polish people who were not Jews, they put in these nice like heated cabins when they're prisoners, but the Jewish people, they stuck them in these tents with no heat in the middle of winter. It was terrible cold that autumn. All over Europe, it was so freezing that birds fell from the trees. To keep warm, we had only our summer uniforms and a thin blanket. At least if they gave us enough to eat, the other prisoners get two meals a day. We Jews get only a crust of bread and a little soup. Good morning, Vladek. Where are you going? To bathe in the river. You've gone crazy. Well, I'll be clean and I'll feel warm all day by comparison. Many others got frostbite wounds and the wounds was pus and in the pus was lice. So not great conditions going on here at all. Every day I bathed and did gymnastics to keep strong and every day we prayed. It was very religious and it wasn't Ow. else to do. Often we played chess to keep our minds busy and make the time go. I had a set made from stones and breadcrumbs. And one time a week we could write letters through the International Red Cross. Dear Anya, I am fine, I miss you. Only in German and very careful. And through this, it came a passage, a package, chocolate bars, cigarettes, jam. It was so treasuring for me, this package. I had a sign that my family was safe and because I never smoked, I had cigarettes to trade for food. And so things went for maybe six weeks and then, look, there's an announcement outside. Workers needed, war prisoners may volunteer for labor assignments to replace the German workers called to the front. Housing and abundant food will be supplied. It's a trick. Never volunteer. If we have to die, let's die here. No, I didn't agree. I'm not gonna die and I won't die here. I wanna be treated like a human being. Scroll to the top of 55. When my comrades saw that I was going, they too registered. We were right away sent to a big German company. Notice the Nazi symbol on this truck right here. We were taken to nice wooden houses. We got soup and we got bread. Look, a stone and real beds with sheets and pillows. And for a whole day, we only rested and we got back our strength. Ah, it seems like years since I felt warm or been in a bed. Yes, funny, isn't it? It's only a little over two months since we were drafted. I'm worried though, Vladek, who knows what kind of work they'll give us. It doesn't matter. Anything is better than rotting in those tents, I suppose. The next day we were given shovels and picks, things that we never held in our hands before. And the work was really very hard. We had to move mountains. The hills were maybe three or four yards high. We had to make it level. So just imagine guys that the landscape is like this in this picture and they have to basically take all of this on top of the mountain and move it down into the valley so that everything is flat. Some complained, those what were too old or weak for such work. I, I can't take any more. Worthless Jew. If you're unhappy, go back to the POW camp. That's the prisoner camp. It's okay, we'll help you when no one is looking. 
we tried to help, but what you think? Some went back to the tents to freeze and to starve. But what happened to them, I don't know. Still 80% stayed. There was enough to eat and a warm bed. It was better to stay. Always I went to sleep exhausted. And one night I had a dream. Don't worry. A voice was talking to me. It was, I think, my dead grandfather. Don't worry, my child. It was so real, this voice. You will come out of this place free on the day of Parsha's trauma. I woke up right away. And when I went to sleep again, it was Parsha's trauma, Parsha's trauma. So what is Parsha's trauma? Well, each week on Saturday, we read a section from the Torah. That's kind of like their, if you're familiar with the Bible, it's kind of like their Bible, their religious text. This is so-called a Parsha. And one week each year, it is Parsha's trauma. Before work, a few of us prayed. It was a rabbi there with us. One moment, rabbi, when will we read Parsha's Truma? Parsha's Truma? In the middle of February, almost three months from now, why? Three months, and every day was for us a year. I told him my dream. Let's hope it is true. I'm afraid we'll never get out of here. So again, he has this dream back here that his dead grandfather comes to him and says, on the next Parsha's Truma, which is like one of their celebrations in their religion, and Jewish religion, um that's when you're going to get free and so he wakes up and he thinks that this dream is real that he's going to get out on this jewish holiday uh, let's pause here for a second does anybody have any questions that they want to put into the chat or that they want to ask me out loud before we keep reading anybody confused on something specific that you want to ask me again you can ask out loud or you can put it in the chat if I don't get any questions in the next 30 seconds, um, then I will move on. Uh, we'll get late and I'll show you where we'll get to the questions and answers in just a second. And in case you guys didn't pick up on the fact we are not going to do annotations during this graphic novel. Um, the Jewish re Jewish religion. Um, yeah, it's it's more important just for you understanding the novel. I don't think there's any questions today specifically about their Jewish religion um, and the culture, but I just wanted you guys to know why he thinks this day is so important because he thinks that he had a dream that that's the day he's going to get out and that's very important to them. All right, let's keep going. Top of 58. <clears throat> So we worked day after day, we survived week after week the same, until one time, look, soldiers. It came very many to stop out and warm up. Attention, line up on the road in two rows immediately. We were not at ease. We didn't know what they could do with us. I stood always in the second line. Psst, Vladek. I didn't want that they should see me much. Someone sneaked next to me. Rabbi, do you know what day it is? Well, Saturday, of course. But do you know what a Saturday? Oh, it's Parsha's Truma. They marched us to the main courtyard and lined us up by the alphabet at tables. Name and rank? Spiegelman, Vladek, Corporal. Destination upon release? Sosnovets. This the Germans did very good. To my wife and child, always they did everything very systematic. Very well, sign this release form, and it was all done in one day. Um, if this is the first day you're joining us, just keep in mind here that the Jews are being shown as mice and the Nazis are being shown as cats for a very specific reason here. You mean your Parsha's Druma dream actually came true? Yes, this is for me a very important date. I checked later on a calendar. It was this Parsha on the week I got married to Anya, and it was this Parsha in 1998 after the war, 48, on the week you were born. And so it came out to be that this Parsha you sang on the Saturday of your bar mitzvah. So this holiday, very important to him. He does get released on this day. His dream did actually come true. The next morning, each from us got a Red Cross package and they loaded us onto a train to Poland. During the journey, I sat with the rabbi. So my son, now I see you are a, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's, Roe Hanoled, one who sees what the future will bring. Hey, this train seems to be passing Sosnoviets. When they didn't stop the train, I became very worried. You see, the Nazis divided Poland into pieces, the Protectorate and the Reich, with a guarded border between. The train went completely past my part of Poland, the Reich, and stopped only in the Protectorate. Those with papers for Krakow, out. 
and when it stopped in Warsaw, the rabbi got out. I'll write to you. But I never heard again from him. It came such a misery in Warsaw, almost none of them survived. And the train was a long way past Osnoviets. They took me up, up very far, maybe 300 miles, until we came to Lublin. There they unloaded all of us from the Reich. And Lublin, they took us to big tents, and there we sat. Eventually came some people to see us from the Jewish authorities. Why are we being kept here? It's a very bad situation. Just before you arrived, there was another group of released war prisoners. Two days ago, the Nazis marched them into a forest and they shot all of them. They killed 600 people. We were the next party. I thought you were released as a prisoner of war. Yeah, exactly so. The international laws protected us as Polish war prisoners, but a Jew of the Reich, anyone could kill in the streets. I was very frightened. And then we heard something to give us a little hope. We have bribed the Germans to release prisoners to the homes of local Jews who will claim you as relatives. So basically they're figuring out a way for these guys to kind of sneak past and stay with these other people. They're bribing them with money or whatever they have so that they don't meet the same fate of getting shot in the woods. My name is Spiegelman. There's a friend of my family named Orbach in Lublin. I met him when I was here for army training. Fine, we'll try to register you as his cousin. That night, I went out from the tent. I had to urinate. And then you see the shooting. And a guard began shooting to me. I ran quick inside, and I thought all night that different things, what could happen to us. Then as soon as it was light, Spiegelman, Spiegelman, Vladek, Orbach, I'm so glad to see you. And in 10 minutes, I was free. Orbach was a friend from my uncle. He had two beautiful daughters near my age. I'm sorry we can't offer you a better meal, Vladek, but the Jews of Lublin get very few food coupons. One moment, girls, I have a gift for each of you. Oh my God, chocolate. These I saved from a Red Cross package. Always I save, just in case. Eventually, when I came again to Sosnoviets, we sent them food packages. We were for a while a little better off, and they wrote back very happy and how it helped survive them. And then they wrote that the Germans were keeping the packages, and then they stopped writing finished. With the ore box, I stayed a few days recuperating, but I was restless. How could I manage to sneak across the border to my family? Top of page 64. We got a couple more pages to go. Trains were still going from the protectorate to the Reich. Only one needed legal papers. Of course, this I didn't have. But anyway, I got on the train in the direction I wanted. I approached the train man, a Pole. Notice that he's a pig. They portray the Polish people as pigs here. May I talk to you for a moment? Sure, soldier. I still had on my army uniform and I didn't let them know that I was a Jew. Well, you're a Pole like me, so I can trust you. The stinking Nazis had me in a war prison. I just escaped. The Poles were very bitter about the Germans, so it was good to speak bad about them. I'm trying to get to Sosnoviets, back to my family. Don't worry, when we get to the border, hide in here. And so the train man helped me come back to my side of Poland. I walked first over to my parents' house, but I thought I might never see again. Oh, I give all, it's Vladek. My son, thank God you're safe. And in spite of everything, you look healthy. I'm strong, mother, but you look sick. It's because I was worried about you, but it wasn't only this. She was sick with cancer. And a month or two later, she died. She never knew how terrible everything would soon be. And father, your beard, what happened? You shaved it off. It's growing back now. He was very religious, so like a rabbi, and of course he always had a big beard. Well, in September, the German soldiers grabbed many Jews in the streets. They made us sing prayers while they laughed and beat us. And before letting us go, they cut off our beards. And now the demons have taken away my seltzer factory. They, enough. I must bring Vladek home to Anya before curfew. At seven o'clock, it was a rule. All Jews had to be in their home and all lights out. So he's about to reunite with his wife, Anya. From my parents', parents house to Sosnovy, it was only a short ride. Go in and say you just got a letter from me saying I would be home in a week. I stood at the door listening. Don't joke. If Vladek was coming home, he would have written to us too. Surprise. Oh my God, Vladek. I grabbed my son. He was two and a half years old. Right you. Why do you cry, my boy? I'm your father. The buttons, your metal buttons, daddy, they're cold. 
and I don't need to tell you how big the joy was in our house. Even though everything was really tough and it was really very tough, we were happy only to be together. Not so like how it is with me and Mala. I tell you, if Anya was alive right now, it would be everything different with me. But Mala makes me crazy. Only she talks about money, always about my will. Please, Pop, you always tell me the same thing. There's nothing I can do. But I haven't with whom else to talk. And it's for you I watch out my money. Geez, let's talk about it next time. I'll call you. Besides, it's getting late. I ought to get home before curfew. Huh. Hey, where's my coat? I know I put it in here. Mala, did you put my coat someplace? No, are you going now? I'll make you some coffee. No thanks, I'm not thirsty, and you make the worst coffee I've ever tasted. But I still have that bag of espresso you once left here. But that was over six months ago. That coffee is completely stale. So maybe some tea? No thanks, just my coat. Dad, have you seen my coat anywhere? Yes, I threw it out. What? You're kidding, give it back. It's too late. When you were sitting first down to dinner, I threw it outside. By now, the garbage men took it away. Such an old shabby coat. It is a shame that my son would wear such a coat. But I like it. I have for you a warmer one. I got you at Alexander's a new jacket, and I can give you my old one. It's still like new. Here, just try it on a minute. Oh, great. A Nahide windbreaker, and it's too big. Uh, it looks like you are a million dollars. Look, Dad, you can't do this to me. I am over 30 years old. I choose my own clothes. After you wear it a little, you will see how good it looks. Come, I'll walk you downstairs. So don't forget, Artie, you call me this week and we can talk. You really threw out my coat. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. So that's where we end chapter three for this week. This one is called chapter four, The Noose Titans. That's gonna be our lesson on Wednesday. Um, obviously we see people hanging here and we see the Jewish star. Um, so we know that things are about to get really intense. We're about to see a lot more death in the next chapter of this book. Um, so let's take a look at the rest of these for today. So you have a chart for today and then you only have two questions underneath the chart. So here's what you're filling out guys. Um, this is from what we read today. And uh, Ms. Cheeseman and I gave you guys quotes on the left side that you see. And then we gave you some answers already to fill in. Um, so like the first one, what does this reveal about the characters? So this quote, you're dropping this on the carpet, cigarette ashes. You want it should be like a stable in here. It's his dad yelling at him. So what does it reveal about the characters? I gave you this one already. It shows how Vladik is concerned about how clean and neat his house is potentially because of the terrible conditions he lived in during the war. So he probably wants his house nice and clean now because he lived in filth and in dirt when he was in the war, right? The next one, does this propel the plot of the novel or provoke a decision? So what this means, think about propel like a propeller. So what does it cause to happen in the novel or does it cause a decision to happen? So what does it cause to happen in the novel? Artie and Vladek come into a conflict, right? He's yelling at his son. This is causing, um, in the plot of the novel, this is causing a conflict to happen between the two of them. And then finally, the last one, your thoughts, reactions, and comments. That's just your reaction to things. Um, let's take a look at one more. The next one I did for you. We tried to help, but what do you think? Some went right back to the tents to freeze and to starve. Um, so this one, we gave you the middle one. What does it cause to happen in the story? This situation provokes the prisoners to decide between taking care of themselves or helping other people. They have to decide which is more important during more time. So this first box is what does it tell us about the personality of the characters? The second box, does it cause something to happen in the story, like an event or a conflict? And then finally, any thoughts, reactions, or comments you were thinking in your head when you read that? So like this one is about the rabbi and the thoughts, reactions, and comments say, since the rabbi was unaware of his fate, I am concerned that some of his family will end up there too. So the last one is more um, just your personal opinion. The first one, what about the characters? The second one, does it cause something to happen? And what is that thing? Um, so that is the chart, guys. You guys are going to fill that out. Number one, which of the following does not, I need you to pay attention to this for question one, does not show evidence as a, of a survival skill that he used. So something he did to help him survive. 
So three of these things are things that he did to help him survive. One of them is not. One of them is just something that happened to him. It's not something he did um, to help him survive. And that's going to be the answer because you're looking for the one that does not show his survival skills. Um, you don't need to justify because I gave you the text evidence already for this one. And then finally, number two, how has Vladek proved to be a leader and intelligent during his time as a prisoner of war? Um, you are going to use the race strategy here. So Vladek proves to be a leader because, give me your answer. In the text, it says, and you'll have to go back to the book to find me a piece of text evidence where he is a leader or intelligent. And then this shows where this means at the very end. Um, so this is, um, that's, this is the activity for today. Um, at this point, what I'm going to do is use the rest of this time as kind of like office hours. Um, so I am going to stay on the call for 20 more minutes. Um, we will go over the multiple choice question together. And then the rest of the time, what I am going to do is um, just sit here. And if you guys want to ask me about certain parts of the chart, um, or if you want to ask me about your race strategy at the end, you can stay on and do that. Otherwise, if you want to leave the call, um, you can do so. So let's go over um, the multiple choice question together. I see a couple of you already answered it. So which of the following does not show evidence as a, of a survival skill that he used? A, I answered in German and his partner stopped him from beating me. B, I'll be clean and I'll feel warm all day by comparison. C, I had cigarettes to trade for food. D, the next day we were given shovels and picks. Okay, so who can tell me one of these that's a wrong answer and tell me why it's a wrong answer? Because we're looking for the ones that are survival skills, right? Um, Edickson, go ahead. Tell me which one of these answers here is a wrong answer. C. C, is that what you said? Yes. Yes, so we're not gonna pick C here because that does show a survival skill, right? Edickson, how does C show us a survival skill? Uh, because uh, he can trade cigarettes for food so he can survive. Yeah, absolutely. So getting yourself food in any way that you can, even if it's trading for food, is a way to survive, right? Somebody else, um, aside from Edickson, who can give me another wrong answer and tell me why it's a survival skill? Josiah, let hey. me, uh, who was that, Darren? Yeah. Yeah, Darren, tell me why A is a wrong um, answer here. How does A show a survival skill? Because he um, answered in German, so his partner stopped beating it on him like almost every day. Yeah, okay, good. So how does that show him surviving? Uh, you don't. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Darren, how does that show him surviving for A? Because since he's speaking German, he um, they don't have to be on him anymore. Is it still too loud? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Okay. okay. So, right, guys, he is showing, um, yeah, he is showing that because he is speaking in German, which is what the Nazis speak, right? He's not speaking in Jewish. He's not speaking in a different language. He kind of saves himself because he can speak in German. Um, so if we're down between B and D, we're trying to pick the one that doesn't show a survival skill. It's just something that happened to him in the story. Um, go ahead and put what you think is the right answer into the chat. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. I see a lot of you getting it. I think only one person missed it. Most of you did a great job. Um, okay, so you were down between B and D. D is the right answer, right? When they were giving them jobs, they just give them the shovels and picks. That's not something Vladek chose to do to survive. It's something they made them do. This one here, I'll be clean and I'll feel warm all day by comparison. Him bathing every day. Um, remember, he said a lot of his fellow comrades had lice and they had pus from their wounds and they were getting sick. So by him taking these baths every day and keeping himself clean, that was actually a way for him to survive. Um, so D is the right answer because it's the only one that did not show a survival skill. Great job. Okay, guys. Um, so I'm going to stop recording now.